It's a new year and there are no excuses for making any of the mistakes that I have in this video all about ways to improve your Royal Caribbean cruise up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. I love sharing tips and advice on how to have an amazing cruise. And with the new year, I was thinking about rookie mistakes you really should not be making in 2022. Now, certainly there's a wide array of mistakes I think that people make on a cruise ship. And while I can't cover every single mistake that everybody could possibly make on a cruise ship, I wanted to talk about the big ones that I think are really important here in 2022 to focus on. So I thought about what are the biggest mistakes that somebody who's brand new to cruising is probably going to make or possibly going to make while going on their cruise or even before their cruise. So if you're thinking about booking a cruise, if you've got a cruise booked or maybe you're about to go on a cruise, I've got the list of things that nobody should be making. And I think these are really common mistakes among first time cruisers. Although quite frankly, these can be done with pretty much anybody out there. Let's start off with number one, not doing online check-in. Royal Caribbean has made online check-in so easy through its Royal Caribbean app. And unlike other years, it's actually really important to do your online check-in, especially to get your check-in time. Your check-in time is super important. Royal Caribbean now prioritizes the check-in times to the point where in a lot of ports, they're not letting guests come in unless they're there for their check-in window time. So number one, before your cruise, you're going to want to get the Royal Caribbean app installed on your phone. Then you're going to want to log in and look to see if you can do the online check-in. Typically, Royal Caribbean is opening up the online check-in around 45 days before your cruise begins. And no, you don't have to make final payment in order to get the online check-in option. As long as you have a deposit, you're good to go. So my advice is, number one, look to see if you can do online check-in. If you can't, there'll be a date list in the app when online check-in will open up. I would put a reminder in your calendar so that way you know exactly which day it is. Now, why is that important? Well, there are specific times, 30-minute windows for you to get your check-in times. And if you want to get on board the ship as early as you can, well, you're going to want to make sure that you're one of the first people to complete the online check-in because those early times usually go very, very quickly. Complete the whole online check-in process as well. This is not just about getting your check-in time. Scan your passport, upload photos of your vaccine cards, do as much as you can before the cruise. The reason why is the more time you're doing at home, doing all these things, less time you'll spend in the cruise terminal in the check-in process. It's amazing the difference in time required for the people that do all the stuff in advance versus the folks that have to go through all of it in the terminal. The bottom line is completing the entire online check-in process before you ever arrive at the terminal will save you so much time. And at the end of the day, I would rather spend the time doing it at home rather than wasting time I could be spending on vacation on board the ship. Number two on my list is skipping travel insurance. You know, in the past, I've always told people the decision to get travel insurance is a personal one, and there isn't a right or wrong answer for everybody. I do believe here in 2022, with the pandemic and a variety of other factors involved, I think you really should get travel insurance for everybody. I think it's a good idea. It's very inexpensive, and it's not going to cost you that much more considering where you are and the benefits you get from travel insurance. Now, First of all, before you spend any money, you probably should check with your credit cards. There are a lot of credit cards that include travel insurance as long as you use that card to pay for your vacation. So number one, investigate that. This is a really good idea if you're kind of on the fence about spending extra money for a travel insurance plan. It's not bad because it's better than nothing, right? But in addition to that, or alternatively, you could get a separate travel insurance policy that's out there. There's a lot of companies that are there. And number one thing you need to know about travel insurance is they're not all the same. Travel insurance is a lot like car insurance, right? There isn't just one type of insurance that's out there and it just covers everything. There's different policies, different amounts, different coverages. So look into what it covers, what it doesn't cover, and also think about what are the scenarios that you're envisioning that you would like to have it covered? I think the biggest mistake with travel insurance is people just assume it's all the same or they just buy the cheapest possible policy they can find and then decide, oh, wait, that was a bad idea because it doesn't cover these things that I thought it did. Royal Caribbean does sell its own travel insurance, but there are other third-party companies that are out there. Again, there isn't a bad or good choice for everybody. Look at the different coverages, figure out which is good for you, and then go from there. But spend a little time pricing it out. But the bottom line is I really think everybody should have travel insurance right now because there's so many unknown factors, not just about your cruise, but getting to your cruise, hotels, airfare, flat tires. You know, There's just so much that can possibly happen I think it's a really good idea to have travel insurance for your trip. 
Number three on my list is trying to get a COVID test in person. Now, everybody needs to get a negative COVID test in order to go on your cruise. This is a known factor, but I think it's a big mistake to try to get your test in person at a pharmacy, at a doctor's office, or an urgent care location instead of doing the at-home test. Now, if you have unvaccinated kids who are cruising with you, well, you still have to go to get an in-person test. But for anybody that's fully vaccinated, and includes children who are under 12 if they're fully vaccinated, by the way, you should absolutely be doing the at-home test. They're so much easier, reliable, and quite frankly, easy to do. The only at-home test that Royal Caribbean accepts is the Abbott Binax Now COVID-19 AG card home test because it's supervised and administered remotely via video session. It's the exact same process as if you were to go to a pharmacy, which is still going to require you to swab your own nose, put in a receptacle, and then wait for the results. But the benefit is by doing it at home, you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go into an office where potentially other people who actually do have COVID are being exposed to you. And most importantly, it's a much quicker and easier process. You just open up the video session via your phone, by the way. I actually don't think it's a good idea to use your laptop. Using a phone or a tablet is actually easier for the entire process. And then you go through the entire thing. Usually, it's a very quick wait to get a proctor, and you're off to the races. And probably within about 20, 25 minutes of the most, you've got your results, and you're good to go. The at-home tests have been a revelation. And for a while, I was like, well, I still like going to the pharmacy. But these days, it's so hard to get a test appointment at any pharmacy or a location that's out there. And I just think it's just simply easier and more time effective to be able to do it at home. You can purchase these at-home tests through websites like emed.com or Optum. It's the same exact thing, just a matter of how many tests you're gonna be getting in your pack. And my advice is actually get more than you need just in case. And if you have a couple of extras, let's face it, somebody gets the sniffles, it's just good to have regardless if you're going on a cruise or not. My next rookie mistake to avoid is not using a travel agent. I'm a big, big, big proponent of using a good travel agent to help plan your cruises. And these days where you've got future cruise credits and even still some cancellations out there, having a travel agent makes your life so much easier. There's just so much happening, so many moving parts. I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not booking with a travel agent for your cruise. I get it. Some people are really control freaks and want to have control over the reservation. Here's what I would say about it. The travel agent controls the most boring part of your cruise planning process, the actual booking and repricing of your cruise fare. But the fun parts like researching shore excursions, drink packages, and things you can do on board the ship like dining and all that, that you still get to do on your own. It's just the travel agent who manages your reservations in terms of your actual cruise booking. As I said, I emphasize the word good in travel agent because not all travel agents are the same. In fact, if I had any number of travel agents right now, they would be telling you the exact same thing, that not every travel agent is created equally, so you got to find one that works for you. But I think it is a major disservice to yourself to not be using a travel agent when you're booking your cruise. Think about it like going to court. You can go to court and represent yourself, but having a lawyer is a much better approach. Why? Because the lawyer knows the system in and out. The same is true for travel agents. They should know the system in and out and be able to help you save money and time. It's really about time, even more than saving money, because they're there to make your life easier. And the best part about a travel agent is a good one should cost you absolutely nothing extra. No fees, no service costs, anything like that. That's why I always recommend using a good travel agent. Another really big rookie mistake, and this is not only just for 2022, but it's, I think, more emphasized here in 2022, is flying in the same day that your cruise departs. Listen, there are so many different delays happening right now and issues between weather and short staffing that when it comes to travel and getting to your cruise port, definitely fly in at least a day ahead of time. In fact, we might even say two days ahead of time because there's just so many unknown factors when it comes to whether or not your flight will be delayed or canceled. So the bottom line is coming at least one day ahead of time. Yeah, you got to pay for a hotel room, but I would rather pay for a hotel room to have that peace of mind that you're definitely going on the cruise. The last thing you want to do is have a travel delay impact your ability to get to the cruise ship. And of course, the added benefit of coming in a day or two ahead of your cruise is you get a day or two extra vacation time, which isn't bad at all. So take advantage of that. And let's face it, a lot of people are able to work remotely anyway. So even if you're not on vacation, at least you're able to get down there, have a nicer place to work from, maybe a warmer state of mind, and you'll be in the right place to be able to board your cruise ship on time without any delays. This next mistake that I think a lot of people who are brand new to cruising might think about is assuming that your plans are guaranteed. Let's face it, just like the airlines, there's a lot of ambiguity as it comes to what will actually happen, what places you'll visit, what activities will be offered on your cruise. 
you, I think it's really important, paramount, to be aware that things can absolutely change and everything is subject to change when it comes to scheduled plans. Whether we're talking about your ports of call you're going to be visiting, your shore excursions, the shows on board, the reality is there's a lot of possibilities for things to be altered, canceled, delayed, or just not offered at all. So I think number one, you want to have a state of mind that says, oh, you're going to be flexible and okay with change. At the end of the day, you're going to be selling to some amazing places and have a great time on board the ship, relaxing, enjoying the weather, time in the pool, the hot tub. You have great food on board. That will not change. The issue is maybe you don't visit the port you thought you were going to be going to. Maybe the tour you were going to go on is not going to be available there. Not the end of the world. Be prepared to book other things. But I think flexibility and the right state of mind will help you have a much better cruise experience. I know that nobody really wants to ever think, well, why would I want to get into a situation where, you know, these things that I'm booking, these plans I'm making are not going to happen. Nobody likes disappointment, but it's important to have the right frame of mind and the understanding that we're living in a pandemic. You're going on a cruise during a pandemic. These are not quote unquote normal times. And thus there's a certain element of chance involved and you just have to be okay with it. I think more often than not, you'll probably be able to do the things you've got planned or in your mind, but be realistic about that. And the last rookie mistake I think a lot of people are making is waiting to renew your passport. If your passport's coming up for renewal, I would say within a year, put it in now. The passport renewal system has been kind of an on and off, worst case, best case scenario where sometimes they get so inundated with passport renewals that the whole system gets like super slow and other times it's fine. But regardless, don't wait till the last minute to renew your passport. You know, pre-pandemic, you could wait till about you know, a month or two ahead of time, renew your passport and you'd be able to get it in there. But the bottom line is nowadays, there's too many unknown variables. So renew your passport with more time than you need. So that way you don't have to come into a situation where you realize, uh oh, I might not get my passport back in time. All too often, I see folks who were saying, oh, I got my cruise in, you know, three months. I'll just wait until a little bit later and then renew the passport. I'll put the expedited processing. Ain't no problem. Well, maybe it won't be a problem, but it's just, there's so many issues now with the State Department and getting those passports renewed that my best advice right now is to get them renewed as early as you can. So there you have it. Some of my top rookie mistakes to avoid making in 2022. Let me know in the comments if you were talking to somebody who's brand new to cruising, what would be something that you would say is a big rookie mistake you see people making still in 2022 that should be avoided? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you also like this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe to our channel and Turn on your notifications so that way YouTube lets you know when we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCarbonBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.